to left till 12 of AC part 2. This is lesson 12A part 2. And we're calculating the maximum length allowable for a final sub circuit and try and come in under that. The previous lesson we looked at measuring the fault loop impedance, that is with a fault loop impedance meter, and then this way we're going to calculate the maximum length allowable for the final sub circuit and come with a value in under the required amount. So in this system, we have our, um, our transformer again. So here's our substation transformer on the pad or on a pole connected to earth. And we have the neutral going to our installation and we have the supply authorities mains coming to us. So often on this side, we call this the Z external. So uh, this is the impedance of the supply authorities cables and their transformer. On this side, we call this the Z internal. So this is the consumer mains, final sub circuits, the earth protective earths and the neutrals that come back to our neutral link and our MEN. So where the length and cross section of the mains is not known, we may assume that 80% of the voltage drop under the fault condition will occur in the final sub circuit. So basically, we're saying we may not know what this is, and we're going to assume that 80% over here. So effectively, we're assuming that the supply authorities will only limit the current by 20% with their transformer impedance. So the Z at the transformer and the Z on their cables, both their active and their neutral cable. So with that 80% of the voltage drop, where we can control the fault, the FSC must have 80% of the total loop impedance. So the maximum allowable length for a given circuit can be calculated from table B5 2.2. And the formula may look involved but it's not that difficult. So our maximum length is 0.8 times the nominal voltage. So there's our 80%. That 0.8 is our 80%. Multiply by the cross-sectional area of the active. Multiply by the cross-sectional area of the earth. And then on the bottom we have the trip current the permeability of the material, which is going to be copper, 99.99% of the time. The cross-sectional area of the active and the cross-sectional area of the earth again. So the P for copper is 22.5 times 10 to the minus 3 ohms per meter for copper. And if you do happen to be in some of those unusual situations where we're using aluminium, it's 36 times 10 to the minus 3 for aluminium. So this effectively gives you the maximum length allowable for any given circuit. So we're simply using 80% of nominal voltage, the rated trip current, and by multiplying and adding these cross-sectional areas together and dividing, we get a ratio which gives us a maximum length.
Uh, my suggestion here would be to actually take the time to pause the video. Um, I happen to know that uh, this particular equation is not on the equation sheet, Ken's equation sheet version 3. It doesn't have this particular equation. So I'm more than happy for you to, per to pause the video and just write that neatly onto your equation sheet where you can find it. It could be handy for you in the future. So again, here's table uh, B51, which we've already used, and you'll see the uh, this is the full, the full page of the standard. So table B51, um, the table hasn't changed. So even though we're now up to 2018. The values haven't changed and we have our active and earths or our conductor sizes our protective earth rating uh, protective device rating as i should say and then our circuit break types here and here's the note and we should take note that uh, a b curve needs four times rated load to trip immediately 7.5 for a C and 12 and a half times for a D. So special note, um, the types of circuit breakers, B, C or D, are based on the types that are described in the Australian Standard for circuit breakers. So having prescribed the length of the circuit, that we've got, we can now compare it to this table. So if our circuit was protected by a 16 amp circuit breaker and we had a 1.5 square millimetre active, say for a lighting circuit, and our earth was also 1.5 and we would say we were using the typical C type circuit breaker, then we would know that our circuit can be no longer than 51 meters. So in the previous slide, when we did the calc, if it came in greater than 51 meters, bah -bah, there's a problem. If it came in under 51 meters, then we know that sufficient current will flow and the circuit would trip. So it all comes down to this circuit length, which we determined from the previous equation. So that ends our part two of the second way we can determine whether a circuit will trip the circuit breaker in the appropriate amount of time.